Old man Woody likes the crooked cock. Good good. Consulting gig. This is a good question for my point in life. I'm my Chrysler 300 is about to die. It's on its last leg, and I Wait. just I'm one of those people where I just drive cars till till the end. Like I'm not a big car person. I don't know that much, and so I'm gonna get like a Rav4, or a Pathfinder, just some like a Honda CRV, something like that. What are your your go-to insider kind of tactics for negotiating as far as cars? Well, if you start with like true car and some of these like online estimates, like what you can buy a car for now, mm-hmm. usually, you know, it varies. Mo- used cars have a, or new cars have a markup of anywhere from five to 15%, just depending on what incentives exist yeah. and stuff like that. Mine Sometimes, would be used, definitely. And I'm not oh, buying a new car. Yeah. yeah. So that's a little bit harder. Generally, uh, now everything's documented. So if you know anybody that has a dealer's license, they can check Mannheim and usually see at least what they would have given on trade or maybe what they paid for that exact car at an auction. And if you line that up with Carfax or potentially VinWiki, we have a lot of them, uh, then you can see what they actually paid. And then you've got to assume they had some reconditioning costs, maybe put some tires on, paint a bumper, you know, stuff like that. And mm-hmm. they don't usually care that much to make much money on the front end. They're going to make a lot of money in finance. Um, and so that's, and they will have made some money in service. A lot of times that'll have some profit on it. So there's not always that much, but the thing about a car purchase is, especially if you're going to own it for however long, like people feel this badge of honor for negotiating on a car but you know, if you're going to own it for six months, like I probably would, like what you pay really matters. If you're going to own it for six years, like paying an extra five hundred or thousand bucks, like it just washes out. You know, it doesn't really matter. So buy what you want, and don't let the fact that you didn't get exactly the price you had to have to feel good about it interfere with that. Well, the crux of that is though, I want a cool story where I can say <laughs> they asked for thirty five grand, and I said let's let's meet in the middle at five thousand dollars. <laughs> so we haggled, and uh, they were shrewd, so we met in the middle for seven. There you like go. There you I, go. I want a story like that. I don't well, think see, I'm going to get one though in... on a used CRV. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of it's in how you can deliver it. So even though I told you what to say, if you can't sell it, like sometimes it doesn't work. Like I had a friend that was trying to, he was, he really wanted a number on a used Sequoia or something over the weekend. So he's like, hey, tell me master, what do you say? And so I told him what to say, but he's like, when the first text back is really, that's what <laughs> I should say. You know, they're not going to sell it. And so he, uh, he, he ended up having to pay a little bit more, but you know, that was actually an issue for me on the on the cannonball when we did that because I you know was trying to find a reason to be speeding across the country and <laughs> I had gone to a uh, butcher shop and I bought three pig hearts and I had some stickers made up that oh said my trans con transplant transport and That's I was great. I had them in a cooler. But the co-driver that I had, I didn't feel I could keep up the ruse. And if you let that down, like, at all. <laughs> oh, this is so fucking good. I would have loved to be part of that game so much. I'd have, I'd have been dressed in scrubs. Like, <laughs> please, officer! <laughs> You've got your very little yeah. face mask on. Wait, There's not much time! <laughs> That's right. See all these clocks and everything? Yeah. No, so we, we didn't do that. But we didn't get pulled over, either, so I guess it wouldn't have mattered. We, we have to be in L.A. by sundown. It's like, well, well sir, I'm... With the Indiana State Police. <laughs> now, I want exactly. to ask about that, uh, the cannonball. Like, what, what got you interested in that record specifically and breaking that record? Sure. Like, so when, when I was growing up, you know, you read all these magazines and you see Nürburgring lap times and zero to 60 times and hot laps and stuff like that. And I was like, well, that's cool. But what I'd really care about is, like, what car could I drive from point to point the fastest, right? And so I was like, you know, it'd be really awesome. I was talking to my father. I was like, if they just lined up like all of the coolest cars with the best drivers and raced from like coast to coast. He goes, oh yeah, Cannonball, that sounds like you. And so I start researching everything that I can. And that was in probably 03, 04. And this was a couple of years after Brock Yates had released the book. Yates was the founder of Cannonball. He was working at Car and Driver Magazine. And so I just started kind of learning everything I could about it and actually interviewed Yates for a high school project on automotive journalism and told him one day I wanted to set his record because nobody had really done it since 1983 with any level of documentation or proof. And so at that point, the record was 32 hours and seven minutes. And so I said, one day I'm going to beat that. But he had said that he felt like 30 hours was just the wall. He really didn't think that their times could be beaten. But he said either half as many cops and half as many cars on the road, like 30 hours was any all that was capable. And, mm-hmm. you know, 
So nobody had really done it. But then a couple of years later, Alex Roy and Dave Maher did it in a BMW M5 in 31 hours and four minutes. And I know, Rich, Alex. There you go. Hey. Yeah. Uh, super nice guy sometimes. Super and nice I, guy. Uh, ton of fun. Uh, and so I, uh, and I've gotten to know him quite well since then. I'd met him a couple of times and kind of told him like, hey, one day I, you know, plan to do this. And I'm sure he gets it then as often as I do now. And you don't give it a tremendous amount of credence, but it's, uh, it's one of those things. And so I, uh, you know, ended up doing it in 2013. And so we drove New York to LA in 28 hours and 50 minutes, averaging Damn. 100 100.3 miles an hour. What were oh, you yeah. driving and <laughs> you how was it modified? 3 miles an hour. Uh, we drove a 2004 Mercedes CL55 AMG. I had actually planned to drive an S55, which is the bigger four-door car. The CL is the two-door version. Uh, but while I, when I was, bought Kimmy's The Prostitute's Gallardo, I was uh, daily driving it and just wasn't driving the Mercedes, so I sold it. And so I had to rebuy one in 2012 to use for the run. But we used that because it's got this auto-leveling hydraulic suspension so it could cope with the two additional fuel cells that we put in. So it had the stock 23 gallon tank and then two additional 22 gallon tanks. Oh so yeah. 67 gallons total. So we could go about 850, 875 miles on a tank of gas. And at we 100? also had, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Probably go <laughs> wow. probably to a thousand. Is that'll like, hurt your fuel economy a little bit? A yeah, little yeah. Bit, yeah. I don't think that's the number one concern in this. Yeah. I, yeah I, EPA so, doesn't rate that type of thing. So what, are, what, are, how do you accomplish that? Cause when I was, when I talked to Alex about this one night for like an, a couple hours and, and he, ex, he said that after he did it, like he had so many requests to come speak to government agencies, like law enforcement and stuff. Cause they're like, all right, cool, cool. How the fuck did you do that? Because we do, this is our job making right. sure that you don't do that. And, uh, and he got all these invitations to speak before like law enforcement agencies all around the country, the federal agencies. And I guess that they had had aerial photography of the speed yeah. traps and all the f speed points and and they had mapped this thing out to a t and they knew and, and may maybe they even had a spotter ahead of them or something like that there was this whole system for like not getting stopped by the cops going 100 in indiana you know oh, how, right. did, yeah. how did you do that ed yeah because we averaged 110 across the whole state of indiana <laughs> how did you oh, do you were that? probably tearing it up in the midwest because you're just it. That's trolling it. for tickets right like like dragging right, a line right. across the highway the trolling how did you do that so we had three radar detectors two laser jammers a police scanner an ambulance traffic light changer a cb radio multiple phones running apps like Waze and trapster we had <laughs> paper atlases two different powers of binoculars we had five different people that ran ahead of us at different points of the drive to tell us what's going on. Alex had a spotter plane, which was vastly beyond my budget. <laughs> and so that worked, I think, okay for him. But air-to-ground communication with a moving target on both ends is really, really hard. So they had to stop to change antennas a couple of times. We had twice as much fuel as he had, so it was a little bit easier for us. And with forced induction, the supercharged Mercedes was probably a little bit better fit, and I had, a better, I had 100 more horsepower. But it was uh, it was really you kind of get there to New York City with a capable car and a sufficiently capable team. And it's kind of like you pull the arm on like this mythical slot machine that reveals the outcomes of all these variables that you can't control. You know, how's the weather? How's the traffic? How's the construction? Are there accidents? Does the car break? Are there a ton of cops? And literally everything went perfectly. I mean, mm. it was I've done it, you know, since then several times in like cheap and old cars as part of other events that are kind of also tribute to Cannonball. And I've never been out there on the road when it was possible in probably seven or eight tries since then mm -hmm. that it would even have been even with a car that fast to have beaten 2850. And so yeah. I, it just it's hard to explain. I think if you gave me a quarter of a million dollars and 10 more tries, I don't think I would end up beating it just because <laughs> I don't think all the stuff I couldn't control would go well. Let's we'll talk bathroom storm. breaks. All right, yeah, what do you so do we, when you got to go? We had facilities on board for such things. We had a, you know, a pee bottles and a bedpan, but we didn't use any of it, uh, honestly, because we stopped three times for gas, and we, but we stopped about every two to three hundred miles just for like a sixty-second switch drivers stop, stretch your legs, avoid blood clots, and and kind of you drive fastest in your first and last fifteen minutes, and so it would just more that time, and you easily made up the time from when you were not moving. And so we'd pee then and be fine just on the side of the road. Yeah. What is an ambulance light changer? So it's like a <laughs> where do you uh, get LED one? circle. And it's... Uh, is it like there's like a, an ambulance going with someone with a broken femur and you're like, 
not anymore and you turn it off <laughs> so most of them work on encryption but in california back in 2013 they weren't encrypted so you don't you don't spend a lot of time on surface street so it's not all that useful it's really cool to say you've got it and i've enjoyed that but um the only one it worked on is like crossing the last street that you have to to go on and uh we we just ran it anyway it didn't matter so but but what, what this thing is it a thing that people can buy and i assume it's like illegal. red to green they, they, there used to be a company oh. that sold them under the brand <laughs> you don't know that. He's I controlling didn't... the traffic. Line. Yeah, ambulances, <laughs> right. though, they get mostly green lights with this device. Yeah, but sometimes, depending on the setup uh, <laughs> and so how, they're, how, they're, how they're wired, it, it usually actually just turns them all red. So it's red in all directions, and they run it. Sometimes it turns them green. In California, it turned it green. But, you know, mm -hmm. you've always heard that rumor that if you flash your bright lights too fast at a traffic light, it'll change. And... That would be a, a pure happenstance that you hit the right frequency, but that's mm. what's happening here. It's just a little bit more programmed and a little higher frequency, more likely to work. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I ended on that note. I love that the word play. That was the best shit I've ever heard. <laughs>